וידבר השם משה במדבר סיני. השם ספוק תו משה עם מדבר סיני, וסיני דזת באור מועד. באחד לחודש השני, the first of the second month, בשנה השניס, לצייסום מארץ מצרים לאמור. The second year after they had left Mitzrayim, saying, סואס ראש, כל הדס בני ישראל ומשפחות ובני סבוסם, יש לגנולג' the heads of the total Adas Bnei Yisrael, according to the families, the paternal line. And the families are counted based on the paternal, not the maternal. The Mizpar Shemos Kozokhul Gogosom. The numbers of the names, each male based on their head count. Let's see what this means. The Mishposom. Da Mini Kol Shevet Veshevet. Firstly, you have to know How many people are contained within every Shevet? That's Mishchosom. Ruven, Shimon, each one is a separate family. That's the pedigree. Lebesa, Avosom. But it's the, it's identified. Misha, Ovid, Mishavet, Echot, Vidin, Mishavet, Acher. If one's from the paternal side, you're from one Shevet. And the maternal side, you're from another Shevet. Yokum, Al Shem, Oviv. He identifies with the, the paternal, not with the maternal. That's Mishpachosam, family, but it's Beis Avosa. The Avos, not the, the mother. It's not the maternal, it's the paternal. Lugulosam. What does it mean according to the heads? Alidei Shkolim Beka Lugulos. They should not be directly counted. Rather, it's through the Machsa Shekel. Each person gives the Shekel, the Machsa Shekel, Because it says Beka Lugogolis, and through that you'll know the number. Now, who is eligible for counting? We had earlier that the Levium here also are counted from the age of 30 days old. The other Shvotim were counted from the age of 20 and above. What, what, why is one more, one's less? So over here it says, why at the age of 20? From the age of 20 and above, the one who's eligible for conscription, they should be acknowledged, they should be counted according to their numbers, and you and our own should be the ones to count them. See in a moment, what's the out of our own? I mean, let them give the Marza Shekel. So over here, there's a beautiful Balaturim. The first Rashi said, why are we counted? Because it shows the love that Hashem has for us. And he, we were counted multiple times. One of the times we were counted was after the Chet Egel. What is it now? It to when wolves come into a flock and to kill the sheep because of the relation between the shepherd and the flock he counts the sheep afterwards because there were casualties as a result of Chet Egel therefore we were counted we were counted after to see how we were how we knew the number initially when we left Mitzrayim and after Chet Egel we counted again so here the Baal Tur makes a point here it says when they're being counted it's out of Aaron After the Chet Egel, it was only Atom. Only Moshe Rabbeinu counted them, not Aaron. So take a look at the Balaturim. Atom Aaron, Ulamala Parshas Kisiso, Losia Aaron Bosa Minyon. In that counting, after the Chet Egel, Aaron was not involved in that county. He didn't participate. Because through him, the Egel was, was made. He was the one who was involved in gathering the gold. It was due to his participation. That's why there were casualties. Therefore, he was not included in the counting of Klal Yisrael. Therefore, he was not involved in the counting. Because there was a degree of culpability. As we see that he lost two of his four sons because he was involved, although he wasn't, he wasn't liable for the Chet He wasn't involved in believing that Moshe died, 
but factually he was a participant, and because he was a participant, therefore he was not part of that counting. There, there it's Moshe. But over here, that this is unrelated to anything, it's just to know this is at the entry point, going to Eretz Yisrael for conscription, therefore it's out of Aaron. It's not only Moshe, Aaron is also participates in this counting. This is the Bala Turing. So here, the Orchaim points out, it seems to be a little redundant. First, it says, Su is Rosh B'nai Yisrael. Su means acknowledge the heads of the B'nai Yisrael, and it went very specifically. And then it says, Tif Kedu They should be counted. The word Su means identify the families, identify the people, point to the paternal line. So why it does it, it conclude, it says, Tif Kedu Osam. Tif They should be counted. It's Osam. Seems to be redundant. So here, take a look at the Rechaim HaKodesh. Tif Kedu Osam. Choza lo Why does it repeat and say they should be counted? They should be acknowledged? Lo hispik ma'ashikodam lo ma'suas rosh. Why is it sufficient that it says you should acknowledge the, the, the heads of the families or the heads of the each person? Le'ircho be'kavod esom rusu she'chavin api divreim zau. She'omru se'yalkut. Now, the Gemara in, in Shabbos tells us that when Klal Yisrael, that initially Rashi cites this in Joseph Rocha, the Torah was given initially, was offered to all the Umas Olam, to all the nations of the world. And they turned it down. It was offered us, we said, Nasvin Nishman. The Yalkut says no. Akash Brok did not offer the Torah to the nations of the world. He offered it only to us initially. And then they came afterwards with a claim. They said, why are we being left out? I mean, is there some, some favoritism here? <clears throat> so Akash Brok says to them, could you bring me your Sefer Yuchsin? Could you bring your documents of pedigree, as we'll see in a moment? It says, here they were what? They were could be identified with the with the, with their parents, with their fathers. They were not of incestuous or adulterous issue, not at all. They were pure. And Hashem says, "You people, you're all illegitimate. You're products of incest and adultery. Therefore, you don't qualify. My children follow Israel because they're pure descent. Therefore, only they qualify for the receiving of the Torah." That's that's the, the back and forth between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the nations of the world. And when they heard this, it says, the in Mishle, when they heard this, they were like astounded. It says, and they extolled us. They never heard anything that you have hundreds of thousands of people, every one of them is pure. I mean, the Torah, last week we had in Babidbor towards the end, it was the uh, the Macaulay, right? His mother was the only woman who was defiled. Shlomis Basdivri. The Torah goes and identifies of millions of women, the only one who had this illicit relationship, even although she was raped, but she brought it upon herself because she was too friendly with the, the male. She was she had a breach in her modesty, but that was the only one. It's unheard of. And that was even a rape. It wasn't even that. Willingly, it's come over and never Yeshua. So he's he's citing the Siyalkut to Orachaim Kodesh. The Yalkut says Sheomru Niskanu Umus Oylam Bisur Maro Niskarif. Why are you choosing the Jews to get close to you? What about us? Amalehem Hakadosh Baruch Hu Hevili Sefer Ikun in Shalachem. Even though Al Rashi cites the Chazal Sefer Yichusi, bring me your, your documents of pedigree. V'Nibz Kol Echad Enu Yodea Meizem Mishpacha. Who at Khan and the Goyim, they're not able to respond. Who exactly is my father? We find by the Max Bechoris at when it was happening, they said Kulonu Mason. They had one family, you could have 10 people dying. But Hashem says only the Bechoris. So Rashi says, cites the Chazal that the woman committed adultery and she wasn't sure who the father and she committed adultery with men who weren't married, they didn't have children. 
So although she believed that it was her, all her children, it was her children, but because the paternal line was not known, each of them was a b'chor to their father, therefore they all died, because they were all b'chorim. So therefore, the Egyptians, they didn't know who exactly who their father was. And that's what he says. You couldn't trace the paternal line with the Egyptians. Fal Yisrael, they were able to bring the Sefi Yichusin, or as he cites, Sefi Kuni, to identify the Ikun. Therefore, God is mocked with his adamant that you have to have that pedigree and he denigrates one who's lacking in that. They should be counted. They have to be of exalted status. Su, who qualifies for this counting? If you're Worthy of being put on a pedestal, then you then you, you're eligible for being counting. So only Claudia show could prove that pedigree of the paternal paternal line. Oh, therefore, they will yet tifkedu. Loshin the seers Romanos limsush kolechod sefi konim that every one of these people had that document of pedigree. Mashengi bumas olam lakach bir ma he lemailo maya mailo benesrim. And now, at what age? From the age of twenty. And above, mounted Shikh Magufo. So therefore it's necessary to say Tif do also. So first you have to have the Sefi Yichusi. If you could have the document of pedigree, now these people are eligible to count it at for what age? At the age of 20 and above. It's interesting. We find that after the Chet of the Balpur with the Nosmijon, when the Jews they got were involved with the women of Midjot, with the Balpur, with the idolatry, because Bilam had said to Bolok that the God of the Jews hates promiscuity, licentiousness. He cannot, he will not tolerate it. And it worked. 40,000 Jews died in the Magefa, the plague. And if not for Pinchos, his zealotry at the time, the only reason why the Jews were not destroyed was because, Bil because Bo Pinchos had assumed the vengeance of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. He could not tolerate the Chil Hashem. That's what happened. Right after that happened, 40,000 Jews died. Men died. Again, there's an order to count the Jewish people. Because again, as I said earlier, whenever there's a mishap, it shows the Chafibus, shows the love he has for us, like the shepherd who counts his flock, again, we were counted. But over there, that counting was different. That counting, when it refers to every family that was counted, it says, Hachanochi, Hapalui, every family that's mentioned, you find the letters Yudk. So Rashi with the site the why? Because the world could say, I mean, who, you, who, you're fooling yourselves, you're deluding yourself. Here they controlled your bodies. And your activities, don't you think they controlled your women, your wives? I mean, here you're priding yourself in your pedigree. You will come from Egyptian descent. The Koshmokhu says, Hachanochi. Yudke, Hashem says, I personally attest to the fact they're all purebreds. And the only ones who perished in the plague are the ones who crossed that line. The rest of them, Hashem says, I personally attest, Yachanochi, Palui, every one of them that they are the issue of their parents. So I asked the question, Alan, where are you? In the past, I asked this question. I said, until now, Hashem doesn't have to attest to our purity. But after the Balpur, when we're counted, and we speak about the families, every family is identified with Yud K. Hashem says, I personally attest to their purity, to their pedigree. But before the Balpur, Hashem didn't have to test. Now the question is why? That was the question I asked. The Torah it says, Moshe Rabbeinu says to Klal Yisrael, When the nations of the world will see the Shem Hashem is called upon you, the Yoromi Meko, they will revere you, they will fear you. And Reb, Reb Loza Godot says, What's, what, what is this referring to? 
when they see the Tefillin Sharosh, we see us where Tefillin Sharosh, which has the shin on both sides, which represents Shakai. When they see it, the name of Hashem is called upon you, they will revere you, they will fear you. What do you mean? Why? The answer is because that represents there's an aura. If the Jew in all the areas of his life is in line, does the mitzvahs, does the Torah as he should, and he wears the Tfil Sharosh, that creates an aura that the non Jew, when he sees the Jew, he automatically reveres him. Why? He has no idea. But immediately he senses there's something special about the Jew. And when you sense that Jew is at a level that nothing in existence compares to that, you revere it. You have reverence. You're awestruck. This is more than just an ordinary human being. Until the Chet of the Baal Pahor, until we failed there in this area, we weren't breached. We left when the world saw us that we had an aura. Even though we did the Chet Egel, there was still an aura after the Luchish Neos. Due to that aura, I mean, would you even question that the Chofetz Chaim's child wasn't his child or somebody else's child? It's not even a question. The is anti-Semitic as the Poles were, they knew the Chofetz Chaim was a holy person. And he lived in Poland. And they would steal the Chofetz Chaim's milk cow he had a cow that they would milk his cow for his, his personal needs and they put it on that property. And so the Chofetz Chaim would go and retrieve his cow. Why? Because they knew the Chofetz Chaim was a holy man. They wanted the Chofetz Chaim to walk on their property. By his walking on the property, the property would be blessed. And these these anti-Semitic poles. Because they, there was an aura in the Chofetz Chaim had a, a, literally a radiance that emanated from him, which is unexplainable. He's a holy man. You associate with him, you have blessing. Chal Yisrael had that aura, and the nations of the world, they sensed it. Once we failed it with the with the Balpur, that aura was diminished. And they, they said, they're like, they're like us. Therefore, Hashem had to intervene at that moment, says, I attest personally, I attest every, the pedigree of every Jew, that he is the issue of his father, of the paternal line. But pre Balpur, before we failed in that area, although we had the Chet Maraglim, and we had the Chet of what? Of the, of the Eagle. And with all kinds of problems. But we were able to retain that aura, and that question never it never even came came about. But now it, it is. It comes to question. Shem says, I attest to the fact the pure for that reason. So the Tifkdu also may Suez Rosh. They're worthy to be counted because they have this exalted level because, again, because they have the Sefri Yuchusin, they have the documents of pedigree, or he refers to it, Sefri Kunim, the Sefer which identifies them that they are the children of their parents, therefore they qualify for Kabbalah Satayra, and you people don't for that reason. Take a look over here. The Misma Shemos. Yehoyoz kol echo biosador nechsha bishmo amor al tsurosu ishis. At this point, every member of the, this group, the name identifies the spiritual profile of that person. Like the Umara tells us in Brochus, what lies in the name, the destiny of a person. And the Umara says, The name determines the destiny of a person. Within the name lies the destiny. So the name, the reason why they were counted by name, because since they were of a very special status, the name tells us how special they were. Due to their level of distinction, which was not the case, the generation that came into Eretz Yisrael, after this generation died over the 40-year period, the new generation were not counted by individual names. Therefore, then they were counted again 
but they were not counted by name. They, they, they were only identified by families. They were not identified by, by names, individuals. They indicate that these individuals, every one of them, initially were meant to go into Eretz Yisrael and, and to inherit the land. And none of them would actually be killed by the enemy. If we wouldn't have failed with the Chet Egel, each one of these people was unique in his own right. And that's why they were counted by name. But because of the Chet Egel, things changed. The new group, although they weren't involved in the Chet Egel, they were less than 20 years old, but they were not at this level. They didn't receive the Torah at Sinai. If they, they were alive, they were less than 20 years old. Therefore, there, they're not counted by name. They don't have that level of uniqueness. Okay. Besides Aaron and Moshe being there when each one is counted, each head of each shavit, the Nosi also has to be present. When his shavit is counted, as they go by and they're counted, each one of them is counted. The Nosi of that shavit, Ish Rosh Bezavosafu, the one who's the leader of the paternal line. The Nasi, and then goes, it delineates who these people are. So Rashi says, What is Itru Yu, Itrem Yu, Kishitifku also, when they're going to be counted, Yu Imochem, Nasi Kol Shevet Veshevet. Together with Aaron and Moshe, the Nasi of every tribe was there during the counting. One moment, there's a Ramban here. And it's like, you know, Moshe and Aaron, they had an Ayan Tova, which was one of a kind. We find that Moshe, Rabbeinu, although he was denied entry into the land, but Hashem says, I will show you the land. So over there, the Sephardim says, why does Hashem say, I will show you the land? Because the eye of Moshe, when it saw every bit of Eretz Yisrael, which was meant to be Kval Yisrael's, that I and Tova made a difference to what degree, what quality of life, what level of Shmira, all that would be determined by Moshe Rabbeinu's eye being, seeing every bit of that land that we're meant to conquer. That's the I and Tova of Moshe Rabbeinu. Ramban says, not here, a little further, that when they were counted, the eye of Moshe and his brother Aaron, who was the Chosid, he was the high of the Kohen Godel, that their eye was upon every Jew who passed by them and made a difference. It's like going to a Rebbe and the Rebbe looks at you and he gazes on you. That makes a difference that, that will impact your life. That that the eye of Moshe and Aaron, they set their eyes on each individual. It impacted and made a difference in the spirituality and the destiny of that person. That's why it's Atovaro over here. Now, you, with that Ramban, you can appreciate what the Balaturim said over here, which I mentioned when we began. When we were counted after the Chet Egel, it was just Ato. Only Moshe Rabbeinu counted them. Aaron was not part of the counting. Here, Aaron, it's Atovaro. So Balaturim says, was there, the counting was due to the Chet Egel. We had to be recounted because they were casualties because the people died due to the, due to the Chet Egel. Aaron's eye regarding this particular situation doesn't meet the quality of the eye that's needed to come upon them because there's a deficiency in his eye. 
because we're attributing the Chet Egel at some level to Aaron. Therefore, it's only Atov. It's only Moshe Rabbeinu. Here, which is unrelated to that, and Aaron has been totally reinstated. His two sons died. He's been installed as the Kohen. Everything else, now his eye qualifies. It's Atov Aaron. As Moshe's Rabbeinu eye was unique in this capacity, Aaron also's eye was unique. His eye was set upon every Jew who was counted who passed before him. Beshemos, by name. Tiftlu also, you know, we say in, in Yalav Yavu, Yizokhe v'yipokeid, right? We should be remembered v'yipokeid. Firstly, what is remembering? If we say, right, which we mentioned yesterday, we say on, on Rosh Hashanah, there's no forgetfulness before the heavenly throne. In Yet we say, we should be remembered and yipokeid. What does yipokeid mean? It also, it's, it's, it's also a degree of remembered. We find that when Sari Menu conceived Yitzchak, it says, Vayifkod Hashem is Sora. He remembered Sora. What's Vayifkod? So the way it's explained is, you know, I, I can remember, remember many things, but when you act on that memory and you actualize something due to what you remember, that's called Yipokeit. We want a Yizoche Yipokeit. We should remember it, and that rem remembering should bring to, to certain things to fruition. That's Yipokeit. So over here, the Ramban says, Tiftu also, Inyad Pekido, Zichron, Vashkoch, Aldover. It's not only remembering, it's Hashkoch. It's divine providence regarding that, how things are going to manifest themselves. Beloshin, Hashem Pokad is sorrow. Hashem Pokad. Kasher Omar, Upesorum Chomoko, Lo Yimole, Behen Ish al Dati, Vgan Pikodin. They should all of He said also the word pikodo. What's a pikodon? Something is given for safekeeping. Hashem is always watching over that. That's tifkudu. It's divine providence. When we're speaking about counting us, Hashem uses the term tifkudu osom. It's alluding that when we're counting. We should only be counted with the Machsa Shekel. We'll merit Ashkocha Protis. You listening? Very important. We'll merit that divine providence, the Yipokeit. He will watch over us, as he said, only when we know the number of, of, of Jews through the Machsa Shekel. Shall Yisprem. It's not to count. Rashi yidu kofer nafshom. They should give an atonement, as it says by the Machsa Shekel. It's atonement for each one of us. Machsa Shekel. And as a result of that, because we've been atoned, because the, the Machsa Shekel was used for the carbonate zibur, for the communal offerings, as a result of that, we'll be worthy that to have Hashkoch protis. That each of us should want, Hashem should intervene and watch over each one of us. The Yeda Mispa'om. That's the epochate. The Omar Bidovid Mispar Mifkarom. Dovid counted the Jews. Kiyoda Misparam Bibkid Sakofer. Dovid Melk knew the number of, of Jews they were. Through the Kofer, each person gave the Machsa Shekel. Ki Rocha Ku Etzli shall enjoy Dovid Kemoshin Emar. He says, it's difficult to say. David, was, what we're talking about, was a godlador, and he was a chosid. He was meticulous in doing everything correctly. For the year, Bem Negev, Bifkot Osam, the Torah says explicitly, when you count them through Machsa Shekel, because we have kofer, therefore we're not going to be subject to plague. So you mean David was not careful in this? And yet, Vama Ulai to David? Maybe David made a mistake. Loma lo osa yoev shkolim. And even David made, he should have counted us through Shkolim. If you want to say maybe he didn't use the Machsa Shekel, he should have used Shkolim, and that would have been the Kofir. 
The word of, of, of the Melch was Nisa, who was, was putrid. He had difficulty. And Yoab said to David, Ultimately, it's going to be tragedy. By counting them, it's going to be tragedy. We're going to be held accountable, guilty for this. I mean, David knows the posse. We counted, we have to count it to have kofir. And as a result of that, why did he count us with shkolim? And he should not sin. And that's and, and Yoav said to him, what are you counting them for? Avokafidati, so Ramban says, the way I understand, what was the failing of David? There was a machzah shekel, and the machzah shekel was used for kofir, for the korban itzibor, all that was in place. But there was no reason why he had to count them. Why did he have to count them? You count us to, God, to have the standing army for the sake of a conscription. But at this point, there's no reason to count them. It's only to bring joy to his heart that he's able to be the king over the, the numbers that he had. That's why he wanted to be counted. To so use the medium, this is a mistake. He used the medium of the Master Shekel to be a kofir. And he felt if it's a kofir, there's nothing to worry about. But nevertheless, it was Shlomo Tzorach. They shouldn't have been counted because that's not sufficient reason to count him. But he wanted the smoach that he himself is Melech al Amrov. Now let's understand. When we speak about the most humble people who were who ever walked the face of the earth, it's Moshe Rabbeinu, it's Avram Avinu, and David is the third. I'm a worm, I'm not a person. You mean to say he wanted to pride himself that he's reigning over such a large number of people? I mean, David was, was wanted the glory. He says, the reason why the Samech, the joy that he's Melech al Amrov. We'll see in a moment what's wrong with that. Did he do it for his own glory? We, we had said the Mishnah is in Pirkei Ovos. If you study normal amount of Torah, don't pride yourself. Because you were created for that reason. So there's no reason to pride yourself. So let's say a person is a bulky bishas. And he feels he invested his life appropriately. You don't feel good about it. But it's not called pride. You feel, Baruch Hashem, I'm privileged. I'm privileged that I had this siyate deshmayo, and I made the right choices, and now I'm worthy to have a relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. That's not pride. You're rejoicing in your good fortune that you succeeded in what doing what Hashem wanted you to do. Tachzik tov means it's attributed to you. It's me. That's pride. Tachzik tov that's mechol. Do you know what it means to be the king over the Amashem? It's the ultimate. He merited to be the Melech Yisrael. That's the Davidic line. But you understand, even though that you're priding yourself on what you should pride yourself, it's not pride. You feel privileged that you were chosen to be that. But you don't count Jews unless it's for a tzorach, unless it's a purpose. What's the purpose of Yotzei you're going to war, then you count them. For any other reason, we'll see in a moment, they're not counted. And the Ramanas can explain why. And the county, the county of Dov Yoav said, Hashem should increase the number a hundred times. What do you have to know the number? Hashem should have creeped our numbers in multiples and multiples. What do you have to know the number? Whenever we were counted for a reason, we, we didn't have casualties. Whenever we were counted where it wasn't sufficiently 
needed chosu. Due to the counting, there was what? There was a diminishment. When we were counting, we, we had to be counted. We were not diminished. When you count to know how many you have, the counting doesn't stay at the number. It's always less than the number. There's casualties. What well, we were counted for purpose? Moshe Rabbeinu B'tgolim, when we set up the formation of travel with the Bidbar, and when the land was divided, what's Shlo the Tzorech? It wasn't sufficient the time of David. So Tzorech, there is no diminishment. When it's Shlo the Tzorech, there is diminishment. And the Tzorech is the only time of war, Rabbi? War, or when our Kodesh Baruch says you should be counted. After Chet Egel, whatever, with the Chimak Oretz, to divide the land, how, because how do you divide Eretz Israel? Oop, ay, 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 knocked over a couple. I've taken a step. I've heard it earlier that if you have something which is not attached to your body securely, you should not wear it out. Why? Because there's a chance 